here is um, a kind of interesting symmetry. Uh, Fareed Zakaria, who I would say, you know, he's certainly had his controversies and, uh, you know, he is the epitome of a kind of establishment position, but he's, um, he's smart establishment. I mean, for, you know, Fareed is a, certainly an articulate and informed and, you know, he's the sort of anti-Tom Friedman, but he's also the barometer of a very narrow part of the New York, D.C. mainstream elite. And he was quite outspoken about Trump for a long time. He called him a bullshit artist. Um, he was someone who really did seem clear about at least who Trump specifically was. Uh, that uh, changed when he praised Trump for the military attacks on Syria. And this is the point. I mean, I've made this point. I do think Assad delivered those weapons. I'm not interested in excusing or justifying Assad. I oppose military action in Syria at the same time. And I always have. And in Trump's case, I cannot ma imagine or conjure a scenario where I would support any military action that Donald Trump ordered because he is who he is and it will be used how it's used. So watching Fareed Zakaria join everyone else in the mainstream media on a war orgy after a handful of Tomahawk missiles was disgusting and disappointing to say the least. He got criticized across the board from Jeremy Scahill to John Favreau. And instead of taking into account how it's played out politically in the United States, he's going to go on CNN last week and accuse people of something called Trump derangement syndrome. Let's check this out. But first, here's my take. I didn't really believe there was such a thing as Trump derangement syndrome, hatred of Donald Trump so intense that it impairs people's judgment. It's not that I didn't notice the harsh, unyielding language against Trump. I've said a few tough things myself. But throughout the campaign, Trump seemed to do things that justified it. Once elected, instead of calming down and acting presidential, he continued the stream of petty attacks, exaggerations, and lies. His administration seemed marked by chaos and incompetence. And then came the strike against Syria. On that issue, Trump appears to have listened carefully to his senior national security professionals, reversed his earlier positions, chosen a calibrated response, and acted swiftly. I supported the strike and pointed out, in print and on air, that Trump was finally being presidential because the action, quote, seemed to reflect a belated recognition from Trump that he cannot simply put America first, that the President of the United States must act on behalf of broader interests and ideals, unquote. Oh on the whole, though, I was critical of Trump's larger Syria policy, describing it as incoherent. From the response on the left, you would have thought I had just endorsed Donald Trump for Pope. Otherwise thoughtful columnists described my views as nonsense. One journalist declared on television, if that guy could have sex with this cruise missile attack, <laughs> I think he would do it. <laughs> a gaggle of former Obama speechwriters discussed how my comments were perhaps the stupidest of any given on the subject. I, <laughs> well, I would like to co-sign all of the comments that uh, he, he restated there. There's some really big problems here. Number one, I mean, of course Trump's policy on Syria is incoherent. And the fact that Fareed Zakaria could even drop in things like, he still was unpresidential after he became president, or he had an incoherent foreign policy, shows that Fareed Zakaria is still playing and played when he endorsed those actions, this fantasy game that Donald Trump could be anything other than he is. Number two, I mean, yes, the cult of you prove your president when you order a military strike is bipartisan, it's across the board and it's extremely dysfunctional and dangerous. And it's particularly dysfunctional and dangerous when you have a moron who knows nothing about the world and whose popularity is shrinking and is clearly frustrated because he doesn't know how to negotiate with Congress. He doesn't know how legislation works. He doesn't know how to push through an agenda. He's facing on some level the fact that he's very unpopular. And he has one lever of power that through a combination of, of executive overreach Bush and Obama, Congress, 
completely giving away many of its powers with regards to war powers and foreign policy, he presides over an apparatus where he can basically do a lot of what he wants from the absolute terror scenario of armed conflict in North Korea to just generally escalating across the globe and killing more civilians. And number three, he this notion, again, that Donald Trump had a recognition that there are values to stand for? Are you fucking kidding me? A guy whose first military incursion overseas is authorizing an operation that kills many civilians, including several children in Yemen, has been working with the military to rewrite rules so that they can kill more civilians in operations, dropping the mother of all bombs in Afghanistan, and of course what happened in Mosul with several hundred civilians killed in airstrikes a couple of weeks ago. Any type of framing or acquiescing that this guy has a humanitarian concern is offensive, stupid, and dangerous. I'd just like to register the hack opening that he started with, too, with the false conversion story. I never thought there was such a thing as Trump derangement syndrome until this thing happened to me. I don't believe that at all. I think if if I think Freed's probably pretty amenable to a, like that sort of thesis that right. people are losing their minds because of that. Hey, folks, Sam Cedar here. Donald Trump can kiss all of our asses. And one way he can is by you subscribing to this channel. I don't know how that works.